Good morning. This is Tiffany here. Starting the solar plexus video today. Solar plexus <clears throat> is the sun within us. It's located here in the upper belly above the navel. I don't know if you can see that there. About right there. In Sanskrit is called Manapura, which means the city of jewels. It is represented or symbolized by a 10 petal yellow lotus flower. The yellow represents intellect and energy and the 10 petals represent syllable, syllables in the Sanskrit language. And each syllable corresponds to a vice. Uh, those vices are sadness, foolishness, delusion, disgust, fear, shame, treachery, jealousy, ambition, and ignorance in our spiritual matters. The solar plexus is sometimes also labeled as the celiac plexus. The celiac plexus is activated between the ages of 14 and 21 years old. It's physically responsible for digestion. It burns away physical debris. It is associated with the element fire, which fire represents change. It releases old energy so that new energy can enter. It plays an essential part in our nervous system. The solar plexus functions at the center of energy related to ego. Emotionally, <clears throat> it is responsible for our self-esteem, self-belief, and self-worth. If our solar plexus is unbalanced, Mentally, you may notice a low self-esteem, you may have codependency, lack of self-control, aggression, and addiction. Physically, it could manifest as fatigue, excessive weight around the stomach area, and digestive system problems or disorders such as IBS, ulcers, things as such. To help balance out the chakra, this chakra or the solar plexus, the sun within us, you can eat yellow foods such as bananas, lemons, pineapples, also a complex carbohydrate diet in whole grains, such as oats, rye, beans, brown rice, or sprouted green grains. You can also wear the color yellow, which I wanted to today, but I'm starting to realize I don't have that much of a variety of color within my wardrobe, which I need to work on that. But I did have some nice yellow flowers here that you can kind of notice how beautiful they are. So just surrounding yourself with the color yellow, wearing the color yellow. You can also place a crystal on a necklace, have it lengthwise to where it rests on the solar plexus. I will give the crystals uh, that help balance out the solar plexus as well. But uh, we can also help balance with meditation, uh, chants, uh, again, the binaural beats, there's also a pranayama, which will uh, help balance that. There's the ujjayi breath, the victorious breath, the heated breath. Um, you can always look up these online, YouTube. You can always question in the comments if you need to. Also oils or essential oils to help balance out the solar plexus chakra is bergamot. Uh, rosemary, lemon, mandarin, roman chamomile, and the crystals to help balance. Uh, again, yellow type crystals, citrine, tiger's eye, amber, 
lemon cords. And again, you can place that crystal on a necklace and allow it to drape down nice and long so that it can rest upon your solar plexus. Um, also movement helps to balance that, which we are gonna do shortly. Um, a lot of core work. Uh, when doing the co core work, make sure to, to draw in your pelvic floor as you draw your navel towards your spine. This helps to strengthen the core and stabilize the lower part of the spine as well. If you need strength and st stabilization there to help keep us upright. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the practice. So, see you soon. So today we're gonna start in standing position in our mountain pose. You wanna make sure to evenly distribute the weight within your feet. You want to lengthen in the legs, draw your knees towards your quadriceps or towards your thighs. You want a nice neutral pelvis, so if you want to kind of tilt it forward and back so you can find the neutral part or place for your pelvis. You want to lengthen in your torso, shoulders are drawn down, arms are down by your sides, palms facing forward. You want to draw the crown of your head towards the ceiling. Not poking the chest out, keep the chest nice and neutral. So you wanna think about having the heart over the pelvis and the head over the heart. Remember our center is right here in our solar plexus. So we wanna to start to find our breath. So start to draw awareness towards your breath. As you start to deepen your inhales and exhales, allow it to enter and exit the nose. Once you have your nice long yogi breath, you want to start to engage the body because that's what yoga is, is union between your mind, body, and breath or spirit. So once you have that nice long yogi breath, we'll start to connect the body. So with the inhales, you want to start to naturally fill the body with space. So the chest will start to rise, the belly will start to rise. As you exhale, you want to think about that pelvic floor. We all have a foundation. Our foundation is our pelvic floor down. Our pelvic floor needs to be drawn towards our navel and our navel towards our spine with our exhale. Now, as you do this, don't give it 100% of your effort. I'd say about 20%. So if you kind of think of like a Kegel, but not necessarily a Kegel, Once we have this movement in the body and the breath and the connection, we're gonna start with sun salutations. Since our solar plexus represents the sun within us, I figured we'd start with sun salutations just to salute the sun, externally and internally. So I'm going with modified sun cells. Um, if you know your sun cells and you wanna go more advanced, you're always welcome to. So we'll start nice standing, still awareness of the breath as you lengthen and expand and decrease the body or release the expansion. On your next inhale, make sure we're moving with our breath. You're gonna draw your arms up. Start to keep that nice neutral pelvis as you start to exhale and fold. Bend your knees here, try not to keep them locked. Nice bend, big bend, whatever you need. Allow the head to relax. Maybe going into a nice rag doll here, holding opposite elbows. Try not to bring all of the weight into the heels. Try to bring some of that weight forward. Everything's nice and relaxed as it's drawn towards the mat. Tailbone draws up. Everything else draws down. Jaws nice and relaxed. On your next inhale, we'll release our ragdoll and come into a half lift. We can be here, we can be here. Make sure the knees aren't locked, they're bent, and you're slightly leaning forward, just a bit. Exhale, your palms down. Start to step back into a plank. Again, I'm going into a modified plank. You'll take an inhale as you find your foundation and lengthen and then exhale and slowly come down. 
When you come down, draw your elbows in. Nice and slow. Start to come into a baby cobra here. So we're lifting with our back, our lower back, our thoracic. You can place the hands slightly up if you'd like. Press the tops of the feet into the mat. Exhale down. With your inhale, curl under your toes. Lift your hips. Down dog. So this is our first down dog. If you want to kind of pedal it out, maybe wagging the tail a bit, making your subtle adjustments here. On your next inhale, we're going to slowly start to step forward and come into your half lift with your inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, slowly stack each vertebrae over the other. Exhale, mountain pose. Two more. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank. If you want to, you can drop to your knees. Inhale, find your foundation. Exhale, down. Inhale to a full cobra if you're ready. Or you can keep your baby cobra. Press the tops of the feet into the mat. Inhale, down dog. Next inhale, step or hop your feet in between your hands, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, mountain pose. One more. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Bend in the knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank. If you like, you can drop to your knees again. Find your foundation with your inhale and your gaze. Exhale, chaturanga or all the way down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Few breaths. Just even that breath out or make sure those exhales are longer. On your next inhale, we'll step or hop our feet in between our hands, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, mountain pose. Sun South C. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank. Inhale, find your gaze if you want to drop to your knees or not. Exhale, all the way down or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale. Down dog. <sighs> With your inhale, start to lift the right leg up. Point your heel and keep the hip closed. Draw your left heel towards the mat with a micro bend in the knee. With your next inhale, bring that foot forward Come into a high crescent lunge. My body's a bit weak today, so my poses won't be as advanced or... From here, we're gonna bring our arms to cactus arms. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the palms down. Inhale to your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. 
Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Think of that core as you're moving through your vinyasa. Inhale, the left leg up. Point your heel, hip is closed. Right heel towards the mat. Even if it doesn't touch, that's perfectly fine. Just energetically drawing it towards the mat. Micro bend in the knee. Next inhale, we'll bring the foot in between the hands. Start to come up for your high crescent. Arms at your cactus arms. Now notice, make sure the belly's not poking out. Draw the belly in, tailbone drawn down. On your next inhale, arms go up. Exhale, palms go down. Inhale to your plank. Exhale into your chaturanga or modified. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. We're going to start working into that core a bit more, so we're going to start to find a twist in our crescent. Next inhale, we'll start to lift the right leg up. Point the heel, micro bend in the left, start to open up the hip, bend the knee. Draw the knee towards the ceiling. Make sure this right shoulder is not propping up, even it out with the left. Next inhale, bring that foot forward. High crescent. Ooh, nice pop in my back. Ah, I'm already sweating and breathing hard. Inhale your arms up, exhale, cactus arms. With your exhale, start to twist towards the right. You can bring the arms out to a T if you'd like. On your next inhale, bring the right arm up, up and over. Exhale, the palms down. Inhale, down dog. With your next inhale, the left leg goes up. Hip is closed, micro bend in the right knee. Start to open up the hip. So I turn my foot, start to bend, and I'll draw the knee up. Watch the left shoulder. Make sure you're not like this. Heart's drawn towards the mat or towards the right leg. Next inhale, bring that foot in. Step it in between the hands. Start to lift for your high crescent. With your inhale, the arms go up. Exhale, cactus arms. With that exhale, start to twist towards the left. You can start to bring those arms out to a T if you'd like. You can even take the gaze back if you'd like. Notice what your attention is, your drishti, what you're looking at. Next inhale, left arm goes under and up. Exhale. The palms down, inhale, down dog. Next inhale, we'll step our feet in between our hands, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, mountain pose. Even out the breath, or the exhale is longer. We're gonna go into a triangle pose. We'll do the right and the left, and then we'll move into a revolved triangle to find that twist again. You may need a block. My blocks are in the room. Hopefully I don't need one. So we're gonna take this right leg, we'll lift it up, 
and bring it back. A nice wide stance for our triangle. The right blade of your foot should be nice and parallel with the back of your mat. You can even out your heels. Once you have this position, make sure this knee doesn't lock. Micro bend. Micro bend. I'm going to start to open my hips. towards the right. My arms are going to go up out to a T. With my inhale, I'm going to reach the right fingertips forward. I usually always pop on the inner thigh with these ones. As you exhale, find your triangle pose. Now you can be up here. Try not to be here where you're poking the glutes out. You want everything even. You can start to slowly go deeper with each exhale if you like. We go into the full expression of the pose. You can take your gaze up or down or forward. Oh, so we need a break here. If it's too much to have a hand up, you can have it on your hip. Just lengthen, you want length in the spine. Next inhale, we'll start to lift up. We'll start to switch the position of our pose. So we'll turn towards the back of our mat. Let me turn this way so I'm not turning my back towards you, but you can turn towards the back of your mat as I did earlier. Make sure you do each side. Now, really lengthen, find your foundation, arms at a T. With your inhale, reach those right fingertips forward. Exhale, find your triangle pose. If you are holding on to the big toe, make sure you're not using your thumb as a kickstand. You want to really use the core to lengthen and the legs and the spine. Try to mimic the way you did the opposite side. We're here for two more breaths. Next inhale, gaze goes down. With your exhale, start to lift. Bring the foot forward, mountain pose. Now we're gonna go into our revolved triangle. Oh. With your inhale, we bring the right leg back. This time our hips will be closed. So instead of the blade, the back blade being parallel with your mat, you want those toes slightly forward. If you had a 45 degree angle, maybe a bit less angle, or maybe a bit more. You also want your, your feet uneven, as if you're on a railroad track or two skis. Once you have this position, you can start to bring your left hand onto your hip, your right arm draws up. Really lengthen here, nice neutral pelvis. With your inhale, you'll reach forward and then with your exhale, you'll start to find a twist here. So you can place your hand here, you can be upright. You can keep the, hand, the left hand on the hip, or it can start to come up. You can go into the full expression if you'd like. You can also place a block under the right hand, which will help. Hips are closed here. This is what helps to find the balance in the pose. Really press down into the back blade of the foot, the right, is that the right foot? Yes. One more breath. The next exhale, gaze goes down, inhale up, switch the position of the pose to the back of your mat. Find your foundation here. This is our last standing pose. Let's make it a nice good one. And everything starts good with a nice strong foundation. Uh, once you have your foundation, 
right hand on the hip, left arm goes up, right knee faces back leg, with your inhale you'll reach forward, with your exhale start to find your version of your twist, I need to adjust my legs, this side is a bit harder for me. One more breath. On that next exhale, gaze goes down. Inhale up. Bring that foot forward. Mountain pose. Ooh. Feeling that sweaty. Okay. We'll start to make it down towards the mat. So with your inhale, upward salute. Exhale, start to fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, down dog. From your down dog, we'll drop to our knees and take a child's pose. Now, you can have your knees mat width apart. You can have your knees together. If they're apart, you're stretching into the hips. If they're together, you're stretching into the spine. I like stretching into the hips. Draw your glutes towards your heels. Draw your fingertips towards the top of your mat. Now we're going to transition from a balasana, um, balasana, it's child's pose to cobra. It's balasana in Sanskrit, sorry. So with your inhale, you're going to act like there's a rope that's hanging right here. We're going to go under that rope and we're going to transition into our child's pose, I mean to our cobra. So when you're ready, I'm going to bring my knees together slightly. With my inhale, I'm going to gently start to come under that rope and come in to my cobra as I exhale, child's pose. We're going to go through three. Inhale, gently start to come up, cobra, exhale, child's pose. Inhale, gently come up, we're gonna hold our cobra for like a breath or two. Make sure the arms aren't straight, little bend, chest drawn out. Now, I'm gonna explain here the lower part of our spine. You wanna draw your glutes towards your heels. So with our spine, we don't wanna be up like this. You may not be able to see it too much, but you really wanna draw the glutes down to find length in the lower part of the spine. Squeeze in your glutes and press the tops of the feet into your mat as you're there. Open the chest. Exhale down. Bow pose. <sighs> now there's different variations of this. If you'd like, you can just have your palms down here. And when you lift, you can lift as such. You can have your arms out. And you can lift as such. Otherwise, we'll grab our ankles. You can point your toes or your heels. That doesn't really matter. Just notice where you're drawing the energy in the body. Now, we want to try to lift our thighs off of the mat when you lift. You want to try to keep your legs close together. And you want to squeeze in your glutes and draw your glutes towards your knees. Just as we did in our cobras, you want to lengthen in the lower part of your spine. You don't want to quench, you want to length. So think of that. Also, that pelvic floor with your exhales, draw it in. We'll hold for about three breaths. Hopefully I can do it. We'll see. Next inhale, we'll start to lift. When you get to that fourth inhale, gently start to lower. You can release the hands and you can rock the legs 
side to side. We're just going to do one more. Now, when you're ready, we'll start to set up again whatever version you did. If you want to extend it or modify however you want. Make sure you, list, you remember all those subtle cues that you want to make internally. Remember the breath. If you feel yourself rocking, again, engage that pelvic floor. Remember, we're working on our solar plexus. So think about your solar plexus grounded towards the mat. Maybe even rooting it, if you'd like. Visualizing roots. Visualization does a lot. So when you're ready, start to find your foundation for the pose. When you come to that inhale after your foundation, start to lift. Three breaths. Exhale, slowly lower. Release the hands. Tick tock the legs. We'll start to slowly come up into a nice seated position. We're going to go into a nice Navasana or boat pose. This is where we're working into that core. So always remember that pelvic floor when we're going through our core. Now, some of us do have a protruding tailbone, which just might be a bit painful for you. If it is, you can sit on a bolster, you can sit on a blanket that's folded that will help to kind of cushion that out for you. There's many different variations for this. We are just gonna go through two of them with the twist in the middle. So, I'll show the variations and then we'll go through the pose. Now, you wanna make sure you're on both sit bones so you can rock side to side so you can feel those both sit bones or those two sit bones. Make sure that you don't lean back onto the lower part of the spine. If you're here, you may end up hurting yourself. So you want length. Also, we don't want this. You want to draw the crown of your head up and the chest is open, shoulders are drawn down. Now, you can be here and just balancing maybe on the toes, maybe just lifting one toe and then the other. You can have them both up holding on to the back of your thighs, still lengthening. Remember none of this, none of this length. We're using that solar plexus, that core to really find that strength. You can stay here, which is a good modification. I might do this for the second one. Or you can challenge yourself here you can challenge yourself here. So you have your different variations. We're gonna hold each one for three breaths. Remember, we'll go through our twist in the middle, which will be Lord of the Fishes. So when you're ready, again, find that foundation. Foundation, always. Try not to allow your legs to fall open. You wanna really squeeze them together. If you have a block, you can place a block in between your legs as well. Once you have the foundation, start to inhale and to your boat pose. Three breaths. One. Two. Three. Slowly start to come back into a seated position. From here, we're gonna bring our left heel towards our right glute, and then we'll ground in the right foot over the left, the side, the thigh. We're gonna go into a twist. I'm gonna be twisting this way so you won't be able to see my face, but you wanna lengthen, you wanna ground here. So you wanna be really grounded in this foot as if you can stand up on the foot. If this is not accessible to you, again, you can sit on a bolster, which will bring your pelvis up and tilted slightly forward, which will help make the pose more accessible. Or you can go into 
a twist like this. You can go into a twist as such. Different twist here. Once you have your foundation, you can start to inhale the fingertips up. As you exhale, you come into cactus arms. Start to twist towards the right. Now you can start to bring that left hand down onto that right thigh as the right fingertips come back. You can place a block under the right fingertips if you like. Make sure you're not like this, like leaning into the pose. We're just using our fingertips here, it's a guide. And if you feel yourself doing it, you can wrap that hand around and reach for the opposite thigh. Draw your gaze over the right shoulder. Lengthen in the spine. Next inhale, untwist. Start to find your last boat pose here, your Navasana. So, make it a nice strong one. When you're ready, I'm going to hold on to my heels. It's a bit easier for me. Start to come into your boat pose. Three breaths. One. Two. Slowly release, bringing the right heel towards the left glute, left foot nice and grounded on the outside of the right thigh. Or if you did another twist, try to mimic the way you did the opposite side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, cactus. Start to twist towards the left. Right hand down, left fingertips behind, gaze over shoulder. Jaws nice and soft. Tongue rests in the space of your mouth. One more breath. Next inhale, gently forward. Start to make it down towards the mat. If you like, you can do some nice rock rolls or you can just make it down. Rock and rolls, you're holding onto your legs and you're just rocking back and forth. Get a nice massage. Oh. Oh. From here, we'll bring our legs out. I mean, we'll bend our knees. We'll heel toe our feet to the edge of our mat and bring our knees together. Arms are at a T or cactus. And then as you exhale, the knees go towards the right. So you notice the legs will stagger. You can stay here or you can take the right ankle all over the left thigh to intensify the twist a bit more. You can take your gaze towards the left to find a twist in the neck. Next inhale, gently release. Set your foundation for the opposite side. And then exhale, find your twist for the left. Try to move the way you did the opposite side. So if you lifted the left leg, you can take your gaze over. This feels so good. Your next inhale will gently release. As you exhale, start to find a nice Savasana pose. I would suggest a 20 or 30 minute, 30, 30 would be nice, 10, 20 or 30 minute meditation after this practice. Um, again, you can work on your chant. You can have some venereal beats going as you're going through your meditation. Um, that vibration really does help to 
get deeper into your meditation. I mean, I know it's different for everyone, but yeah, just just try it. Just try it. Again, I'll put put the the links in the description. And I thank you for practicing with me. Like and subscribe. Namaste.